hi and uh, welcome back to my channel uh, this is another video about uh, the HRF uh, and this video is motivated by a question uh, I just found on um, on reddit so let me show it to you uh, is this uh, question here hello I need uh, to output uh, one milliwatt uh, one milliwatts means uh, zero dBm uh, on seven megahertz what are the settings I need to, to set on uh, on the HRF uh, to get uh, this power on the output and uh, so I think this is an interesting question in general I think the community should really start uh, to gather as much information as possible on uh, the HRF uh, to you know to collect this data and uh, you know simplify life uh, for for all of us uh, potentially to calibrate this unit uh, and these kind of things and so this is the topic of this video so I uh, to to answer this question I prepared uh, a uh, new radio code, uh, the code uh, that you can see here. So basically, I am creating a sinusoidal function, and I am uh, uh, outputting this uh, to the HRF. So the frequency can be set by this uh, slider from five megahertz to one point eight uh, gigahertz, uh, and then I can play with uh, two parameters that the HRF accept. One is called the RF uh, parameter, and it is the number either zero or fourteen, so nothing in between. Okay, either zero or fourteen. And the other is called the IF parameter. It's a number that goes from 0 to 47. So a natural number, an integer from 0 to 47. And uh, so this data, um, you can find it uh, on the official uh, Wikipedia page of uh, the HRF. And it says exactly these, uh, these things. Okay, So RF is either 0 or 14, and the IF goes from 0 to 47. Okay, so, um, right, um, here as you can see I have my spectrum analyzer connected uh, to the HRF. So the HRF is connected using a DC blocker, this uh, is just to protect the spectrum analyzer input from uh, uh, DC. And I'm also uh, inserting a minus 30 dB uh, attenuation also to protect the spectrum analyzer just in case. Okay, so the spectrum analyzer, you let me uh, show it uh, to you. You can see it uh, in more details here. And as you can see, I put a um, uh, display line here. Th this display line, let me set it correctly, is as you can see on the, um, oh, sorry, on the minus 30 dBm uh, uh, value. So this is to compensate for the minus 30 dBm of attenuation. So the line really basically corresponds to 0 dBm. As you can see here now, the HRF is emitting a signal at uh, how much? Let's see. Uh, so let me change the start frequency. At the moment it started from uh, 1 MHz, but let me put, uh, I don't know, 4 uh, MHz, OK? Um, OK. And um, so anyway, uh, the peak that we see here, uh, the moment is at uh, 152 megahertz. Okay. Um, fortunately, it's it's not entirely visible. It's up there on the screen. As you can see, 152 is a bit cut off. Anyway, um, right. So let me show you uh, the new radio application running. It's uh, below here. So basically, just by changing these parameters, I can uh, see the result. So let me zoom uh, on the low frequencies now. So frequency. Stop frequencies 30 megahertz. Okay, so here we see the frequencies from uh, 4 uh, to 30 megahertz. Actually, let me put back uh, 1. Okay, so frequency, stop frequency. Well, no, since I'm going to start from 5, it makes sense to start from 4. Okay, and, um, and so let me play with this, uh, with this tool. At the moment, the RF value is uh, set to 14, so it's activated. So let me put it uh, back to 0. Uh, as the uh, guy on Reddit was uh, was asking, and uh, and for the frequency, let me put the seven megahertz that he was asking about, right? So seven meg. Uh, and here we get our signal. As you can see at the moment, is at uh, about minus ten uh, uh, dB. So it's precisely minus eight uh, dB. So here we read uh, minus thirty eight uh, point something. We subtract 30, and so we get minus a uh, minus 8 dBm, more or less. Okay, so it's not uh, yet at 0 dBm, as the guy on Reddit was asking. So let me increase the IF. So to basically get 
at uh, almost to zero dBm. In fact, it's just minus two dBm. I have to set the IF value to the maximum. Okay. Uh, so if I really want to get the full zero dBm, I have to activate the RF value, so to 14. Uh, and so now I can uh, decrease uh, the IF value and it looks like uh, 29, 30 is uh, what you want. Okay, so let me write 30. Now, uh, it's interesting now that uh, for other values of IF, uh, uh, the HRF behaves linearly. So if I, for example, uh, yeah, basically uh, every unit in IF value corresponds to one uh, dBm. So if, for example, bright 20 here, uh, as you can see, we are getting basically to minus 10 uh, dBm of power with the RF uh, value activated, okay? If I uh, set uh, the IF value to 10, I get minus 20. If I set the IF value to zero, let's see what happens. I get uh, uh, minus 30. So I have a very really, by modifying the F value from zero to 30, I can move the, the power from minus 30 dBm to zero dBm. It's pretty precise actually, so that's great. So let's go back to 30. Uh, as you can see, however, we get some harmonics, about 30 dB down uh, at this value. Anyway, uh, if I go up, uh, let me see if it is still linear. So now I'm at 35, and yes, we are at uh, plus 5 uh, dBm, so still linear. Let's go to 40, and uh, 40, and yes, we are at plus 10, and let's go to the maximum, 47, and yes, we get about, uh, as you can see at the top, plus uh, 17, um, sorry, plus 14 uh, dBm or something. So it's behave uh, pretty linearly. Uh, of course, uh, this level, as you can see, is really crazy high. So it's almost a square wave, as you can see, right? So it's full of harmonics. But uh, yeah, I think at uh, the 30, uh, so for what the guy on Reddit was asking, so just get a zero dBm, uh, this is a pretty decent uh, output. So the harmonics is just uh, uh, 30 dB down. Okay, so this is for the 7 MHz. Let's see what happens if I move the frequency here, for example, to, I don't know, 10, or let's say 8 first. So, oh, I wrote 6, okay. Uh, so at 6 is more or less the same value. 8, basically stable. 10, same thing. 12. So you can see for these low values, uh, we, are, we have a pretty flat, flat response. So let me just use the mouse here instead of writing. Um, so yeah, as you can see, we have a pretty decently flat response at low frequency. So I can conclude basically that on the on the um, frequencies from uh, basically four to uh, thirty, five to thirty, uh, if you want zero dBm, you have to set IF thirty and activate the RF value. And if you want to play with uh, other power values, it's basically linear by adjusting the IF uh, value. So now let us uh, let me check out of curiosity what happens for higher frequencies. So let me set um, a stop frequency of uh, 500 megahertz. So we can see what happens. So there is our signal at the moment, at uh, the moment we are at 21 megahertz. And let me slide the mouse up. So, uh, so okay, like that. As you can see here, it's going down a little bit, quite significantly actually, by the time we are at about 100 megahertz, we almost lost 10, uh, 10 dB. Uh, okay, so here we are on the VHF basically, 146, let me write 144, so we are precisely there. And compared to the low frequencies, the HF frequencies, as you can see, we are down about uh, 10 dBm. So if you, you want to get uh, uh, 0 dBm at these frequencies, you have to set about 40 uh, IF. Okay, so we get basically there, 41 perhaps. And again, it's pretty linear. So if I write instead of 40, uh, 30, I get minus 10 dBm. If I write 20, I get minus 20 dBm. And if I write uh, 10, I get our minus 30 dBm. So uh, the the 40 uh, IF value give you gives you zero dBm at this uh, frequency VHF. Uh, 
And if I move on, uh, let's see what happens. Uh, so it goes down a little bit uh, again. But then uh, by the time we reach uh, UHF, uh, which is about here, yeah, we are we have not quite a zero dBm. Let me have a look. So we are uh, having uh, minus three dBm uh, set in the 40. Okay, so at UHF, uh, it looks like we need a 43 IF. Uh, let's see, indeed, uh, to get our zero dBm. So, yeah, these are the values for basically HF, uh, VHF, uh, and UHF that you need. And so my suggestion is to keep the RF value always on and to play with the uh, IF values, knowing that uh, the different frequencies, uh, you have to set different IF values for getting the zero dBm, but then it's pretty much linear. So again, if I write 33 here, I'm getting uh, basically minus uh, 10 dBm, okay? So as expected. Uh, so just to conclude uh, this video, let's see out of curiosity what happens at higher frequencies very quickly. Uh, gigahertz okay and so I'm keeping this 43 let's see okay which give us the 0 dBm uh, the current frequency uh, UHF uh, let's see what happens when we move up uh, it goes up a little bit uh, uh, stays quite flat so let's say that uh, from now we are at uh, 976 okay so the behavior is pretty much flat uh, i would say from yeah from here so from about uh, the uhf frequency 440 to 900 and something the behavior is quite linear okay yes uh, then there is a drop uh, quite a significant drop until this 1.2 gigahertz and then uh, it starts to go up a little bit uh, let's see but not so much yeah here at 1.8 we are at uh, minus 10 uh, um, dBm okay with a 43 IF value so uh, these uh, frequencies we cannot get a full uh, uh, 0 dBm let me try with by putting the IF at maximum but as you can see we are far away I mean not so much but we are below the um, uh, so let me take the market and go up there we are below the 0 dBm by how much um, but we are at minus 5 dBm okay so the frequencies uh, the, the, the aircraft cannot emit uh, so much power at these uh, high frequencies unfortunately I cannot check uh, higher frequencies so I believe the ACRF, in fact, uh, will start to be behave better at around 2.2, 2.3, 2.4 uh, uh, gigahertz. So that's what I read uh, uh, from the description of the hardware on, um, on the Wikipedia page of the ACRF. But I cannot test that, unfortunately, so I'm limited to 1.8 uh, uh, gigahertz. Anyway, I hope uh, this video was useful. And uh, uh, of course, as usual, feel free to leave comments in the section down below. Bye bye.